Split on the beat. Everybody, Mark again with Exotic Car Play Place. Thanks for stopping by again today. And today's video is, you know what, given the time of year, we've got snow outside now, it's kind of time to package up the cars for winter time. So there's some special things that you need to consider before you store your car for the winter time. This isn't a daily driver, and because it gets stored for the winter time, I'm gonna walk you through some of the things that I do to protect a car for long-term storage of my BMW E60 M5 over here and I'll kind of touch base on the Lamborghini Gallardo next to me here as well because there are some subtle differences how I treat the two cars for winter storage. So let's get to it. Now it's ready to go. Now we can get started. So you're wondering what I do for my BMW or my Lamborghini for winter storage. Obviously winter comes on fast and furious here up here in Canada and so we have to have ways of preserving the vehicles quality and everything else. So basically it's a pleasure to drive in the spring and that we go and set on our way in the springtime without any hitches. So there's a few things that we do and the first thing I'm going to touch on is mechanically. So does it need a whole lot of mechanical servicing before winter? Not really, unless your mileage or the vehicle's condition requires that. Generally, I would say you don't. But the one thing you do need is oil change. And I would say you have to do your oil change in the fall before the winter. Don't do it and wait for the spring. Because old oil in the engine over winter time or you know over storage can actually kill your engine. Because... I had a Porsche 911 years ago. I ended up taking it apart because it needed an engine rebuild. And when I did that, we found a lot of internal corrosion and in areas like the bearings as well as the oil pump. The oil pump took a real beating because it's an aluminum housing. And so these acids that are created in your engine as a result of hot and cold cycling over the course of the summer or summer, fall, spring, whatever, creates a lot of conditions that are just right to create that acid. It creates basically a condensate or an acid in the engine. And so when you have old oil, that condensate essentially lives in the oil and settles down. And of course, oil, you know, sits on water. So condensate or oil and acids tend to sink to the bottom. Well, that always settles to places you don't want it. Bearings and of course, pumps and things like that. And then it takes its toll. So it's in extremely imperative that you change oil right here as you can see I have a lot of used engine oil here because I did the oil service not just on my BMW M5 but I also did the oil change on my Lamborghini Gallardo here so it's extremely important you do the oil change in the fall for those reasons now what else do I do well it comes down to wheels so this car you'll notice sitting on the ground, cold concrete. That could be a problem. That's an example of something I'm going to try to avoid. I haven't yet done this, but I'll show you what I've done over on the Lamborghini. What I do over here is I actually cut. This is a cheap way to do it. I've got the rims here sitting on a pad. What this is essentially is a folded over on itself. It's a yoga pad. I found it at a cheap store or kind of a hardware thrift store, cut it up into several pieces and I put double layer under each wheel, each corner. And so that what that means is now I've got protection. You don't have that hard edge, that hard ridge sitting on cold concrete. There's a little bit of a buffer zone in there and this is going to take up that space. And so you should try to prevent flat spotting on the tires. I had issues in my old Porsche years ago where I never did anything like this and then I would take the car out in the springtime and it felt square. Like the tires actually felt like they were square. I actually had to throw tires out because even though they were fairly new, after a few years of parking it in the cold concrete, it actually killed the tires. I had to get new tires. So done that on the Lambo. The M5, I have not yet done that, but that's another thing I'm going to recommend. As well, the tires. Now, of course, here, the rims, 
Of course, you'll notice you've got brake dust is typical on most cars, and BMW's no different. These wheels are actually quite clean now because I cleaned them. I only have about a one or two drives on them. Last fall, I actually did a good cleaning on the wheels. Unfortunately, like I said, one or two little short drives, and I accumulated a little bit more dust, but overall, they're very clean, and I like to take care of the wheels because... Brake dust is slightly corrosive, not to mention the longer you leave it on there, the more difficult it becomes to remove in the spring. As well as nothing better than having the car ready this you know, beautiful spring day and you want to get the car back on the road and then you got dirty wheels. So I always like to take care of the wheels, set the wheels on some, basically the tires on a nice foam mat, clean the tires or the rims so you don't have brake dust, make sure you have an oil service and you're good there. Now, another thing that's very important on not only a Lamborghini, certainly on the M5, there's a lot of modules in this car, tons of electronics happening in this thing. And because of you, all these electronics, if you do not maintain the proper voltage, that can fry parts and at the very least cause them to not function properly at the very least. And then you'll have a scenario where you'll try to start the car. You might actually spit out a code or something might not function properly. Worst case, you actually burn a module of some sort. So you want to maintain the voltage. And now you'll notice on the Lambo over here, I have, I have a trickle charger, essentially. And that one's charging right now. And of course, it's wired up underneath. Hood's not closed tight because the wires are plugged underneath. And over here on the BMW, I'm going to lift up the hood here. And... What do I have here? I have this wonderful BMW charger here. This is, I got right back from the dealer and so it's a high quality unit. You could tell it's well constructed. It's fairly heavy duty and robust. And it's most importantly, it's got an auto shut off. So when it's done charging, it will shut itself off. So you can leave this thing on indefinitely. You leave it plugged in, you leave it charging, Close the hood and leave it for the winter. Now, it never hurts to look every once in a while, but these basically are intended to stop charging once they're at the point where they're done. Now, with the BMWs, like in the M5, you'll notice I've got them wired up here. You've got the red to the red and that little post over there. That little terminal down there is the ground point. So you can put that to rest over there. And that's where you're going to basically plug in your charger terminals right there. So I always charge the battery all winter long. So keep a fresh battery, you're good to go. Now another thing I wanna make sure you do is, let's go inside the car. Talk about this briefly, and I this goes for both. Of course, I've done it with the Lambo. We're talking about the BMW today. The seats, so I've done a good treatment on the seats already. They're clean. I've done a, a, a seat treatment or a leather treatment on the seats already. What I have to do yet is give them a good polish. So that's yet to do. However, that's always nice. You know, with the leather interiors, you want to maintain that. It prevents crackage here on the bolsters. It prevents crackage down in here or here where these are susceptible to, you know, wear and tear. Make sure you keep the leather soft and supple. That's going to go a long ways. As well, when you open the door, of course, it wafts that, emits that wonderful leather odor every time you open the door. That is such a beautiful thing to have. So always take care of your leather interior. I always do that in the fall as well. Now, the other thing, of course, that I like to do, and you'll notice the difference here between these two cars. What's obvious is I've got a car cover over here. Well, that's because... I happen to get one. I just wanted a good cover to protect the Lambo, protect the wonderful paint on this thing. So it makes it easy. But the M5, I don't have a car cover for it, at least not yet. So what I like to do is make sure before you store the vehicle that the paint is clean. So wash it outside. Make sure, you know, all that bottom area is all scrubbed nice and clean because that's where you're collecting all your sand and garbage off the road. Clean that up. Clean the whole vehicle up really nice, which is kind of what I like to do. That way, every once in a while, even though there's no car cover, I grab this other wonderful little device. And let's go in here. And you'll see right here. 
Now, I'm not advertising for these guys, but this basically is a wonderful little tool. Now, only on a clean paint job, I might add. Now, all I have is some lint, and you get a little bit of light floaty dust from the air that settles on the car, and then you can use this. Never use this brush on a seriously dirty car. You will scratch the paint, no doubt about it. So this here is a nice easy way just to collect all the, you know, that little fluffy dust that settles down on a car. You know, it's a good way to just give it a good little wipe and then you're good. And it keeps the car looking spick and span all winter long. And then when you're ready in the spring, it looks swanky. Only other thing, so the only other thing I like to talk about with these cars is what do you do about insurance? Well, I have video surveillance in here as well as I maintain insurance because you want to protect your investments from thieves. You want to protect it from natural disasters or any other incidentals. So protect it for sure. So I leave insurance on and I, I would suggest even if it's in a garage, why not have insurance? You know, at the bare minimum, if you don't want to carry the full insurance and save some money, I mean, by all means, you can always you know, spend the mere minimum and of course go with your uh, your vandalism, fire, theft type insurance. But either way, I would recommend keeping insurance on your cars all winter long. It ensures that it gives you that peace of mind if you're looking over these cars or not. Again, there's a lot of ways that you can manage that through surveillance or security systems or of course insurance or all of the above. But that is important. So at the, other, and at the end of the day, guys, if I can summarize the key things, clean oil, clean wheels, protect the tires from the concrete, clean paint, clean up your leather interior, of course, keep the battery fully charged, and you will be ready for springtime. So I hope those little tips and tricks helped you guys out there because I know I'm not the only one. There's a lot of you guys that live in the northern climates, whether you're in Eastern Europe or you're in Northern Canada, even the Northern US states, a lot of times have the same conditions that they're contending with. So I just wanted to share some of my practices to ensure that the car is able to sustain a long winter and that it is you know, successful. So when you take it back out of storage in the springtime that you have no problems. Thanks again, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And again, as always, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I really want to hear from you guys if you have any comments, so drop that line below in the comment section. Love to see you in the next one. See you soon. Bye-bye.